So, hi guys, today I will commend Wizard of the Coast, something that they deserve well. I did not expect Bottle Bond to be very good. I expected it to be very bad because two-headed giant draft, like, like, I don't know, like, the only time I've ever heard of any local game stores doing two-headed giants where I live is during pre-release, and even then, it's only, like, ten groups of two. So it's not like there are hundreds of people just wanting to play two-headed giant all the time. I've never witnessed a two-headed giant game that was just like, oh, hey, let's start a two-headed giant game. That doesn't happen, right? Because commander is kind of nice because you can have a different set of number. It could be two, three, four, five. Two-headed giant, it just has to be four. So that has a big limitation. But what they did was very smart. They put in a lot of reprints that are very valuable. Uh, these reprints are very spicy. If you, First of all, what is the price of a box? So the price of the box that you buy into will determine if you can break even. If you're buying a box at $100, you're not going to break even. If you're going to buy a box at $85, you have a very good chance of breaking even on this set. Currently, Sports and More is selling pre-orders at 85. If this box gets down to 80, yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic box. So one of the major questions that many people don't tell you to ask is, what are you buying it into? You know, the difference between 80 and 100, that $20 difference is the difference between coming out ahead and being behind. So doubling season... Nakana, Relevant, Land Tax, all very good. You got the Rohan, and if you get the Rohan, you get the Will. Uh, doubling Season is a fantastic card, although I do uh, take... This artwork does look kind of strange to me. It doesn't really remind me of Doubling Season, but nonetheless, it, it's the same card. The foil versions will be quite interesting, and a lot of the foil card, the foil reprints... The original foil will always be more valuable, but if you ever wanted a cheap way to foil out an ED8 stack, this is the way to do it. And these cards are not going anywhere. These are staples. Like I Greater Good, Seaborn Muse, Doubling Season, Diabolic Intent, these are staples of the game. Meaning that they have been tested through the they have been tested. And they are among the most powerful in what they do. Now, the other thing they did, which I didn't realize they would do, is they printed cards that are very similar, like Arena Rector. And then there's another one. Uh, there's a one in blue that's two in a blue. And it like, uh, it's a recruiter. It's like a Imperial Recruiter for instance. And I don't know if it's sorceries or just instance. But... I think this is fascinating. Uh, what they did was they took reserve list cards or expensive cards, they put it in a different color, and then they made it slightly different. Good. I mean, fantastic. I mean, why not? Like, it does seem to me that uh, that concept is going to work. So, concept one. Hey, doubling season is expensive. Hey, Seaborn Muse is expensive. Hey, this card is expensive. Let's put it in the set. Let's make sure that there's expected value. And just like the Arena Rector, which, I mean, he's got like orange hair. So artwork aside, okay, si small side note, the artwork is kind of gross to me. I'm not sure like this is the type of artwork that like I would really want to get into. You know, I collect the Philias and the Maleras, and these are really, really not. Um, I don't think they're anyone's art style. Like people with uh, pink hair, people with orange hair. Not to offend them, but this uh, Arena Rector is like what? He's like an eighty-year-old man or woman with orange hair. Like, have, has anyone seen somebody like this recently? Like, <laughs> talk about fantasy, right? But anyway. The Diabolic Intent is good. Uh, the Greater Good is good. Um, so you do have cards and you do have multiple rares where you open a pack and you can actually get the price of the pack back. 
a lot of people are poo-pooing this set, but I think they're doing it. They 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 are confused. Because same people who are poo-pooing this set said that our Devastation would be amazing when I said it would be the most awful expected value set in the history of the game outside Dragon Maze, the most recent set. You don't need to take a guess, uh, reprints. And some of you say, oh, when the cards reprint, they go down price. Yes, I understand that. But normally the card will go back up in price, especially if it is doubling season, especially if it is a staple. So I have no worry about, you know, hey, should I buy a doubling seed? If you need it, buy one. This is a good time to get one. Should I need a seed warm use? Yes. Greater good? Yes. The answer to buying these singles is yes. It is now a good time to buy them because you don't want to be looking four or five years later and the utility you get from buying a doubling season, put it in your EDH that can have a good time of it over the next four years. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, are you going to wait for the next reprint? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, buy Magic to play Magic. Don't buy to speculate. Ha, ha, ha. Um, anyway, I like him. Um, Seaborn Muse, a $15 card, maybe goes down to 10 Still a $10 rare and a, a set. It's not bad. Uh, and the spread is good. I like that the fact that there are multiple rares that are going to keep their value. Even if they go down in price, I have very little concern for a card like Seaborn Muse. The bigger concern would be if they unban Prophet of Crufix. Then you obviously you would play both, but the Crufix would be played more. Mm, I guess the Crufix would be played less because it does have blue. But the Crufix is a little bit stronger, in my opinion. So... At the end of the day, they did a fantastic job. The values here, even Vigor is a $8 card. Tide, Tide Sprout Tyrant used to be eight, now it's four. Uh, Chain Lightning at Uncommon is pretty good. Uh, Veteran Explorer at Uncommon is pretty good. So uh, Swords of Plowshare at Uncommon is pretty good. I like it. I think they did a fantastic job. Okay, now I will have to talk a little bit bad about them the promos the way they did promos where they put promos in a clear like literally like that's the worst way to do promos because every store can figure out what is in each pack and the fact that you get to use the promos to actually play in your uh pre-release or your draft is uh insane because like that's really really bad actually um so i have a video about that but outside of this, I like value in my sets. I do, I'm getting older, and as I get older, you know, I'm pretty old, um, much older than most of you guys who play this game. I realize that I still like opening boxes, and I like opening boxes and getting a Birds of Paradise, even though the new artwork sucks and Conspiracy Take the Crown compared to original. But I like opening stuff that I've played before, like Seaborn Muse. Yeah, that's cool. And I like opening value. So also you have the five lands, which are beginning at four ninety nine, and all the five lands are great. Like they equal the value of the pack, which is good. But I really dislike when I open a pack and you just get hosed. Like Hour of Devastation is hose town, right? I like this set. Um, I will be on the record for saying that I right now it's selling for eighty five on car sports and more. So right now, the price point of a box, the lowest price point I found is 85 with free shipping. And you can be sure that Sports and More has a very large order, so that might, it might, that price might come again. But I doubt that you can, I, I'm pretty sure you can get this for under $90, a box uh, shipped to you. Uh, and eventually, I think it will fall to 80 depending on the print run. And at 80 yeah, this is a great set. Um, when you want to talk about expected value, the buy-in is incredibly important, and that's something that most people don't talk about. You guys know where I buy my cards from. I buy a lot of boxes from Dave and Adams whenever it's on sale, and there's coupons and further discounts. And that's where Rudy buys a lot of his cards too. Uh, if you ever wonder why he has so much random stuff, like uh, Nightmare Town, Christmas Before Nightmare, and just random, he's getting them from Dave and Adams. Are the Conjure Tarkir uh, portfolio binders, 
Uh, what else have I seen? Dragon Ball Z, I'm pretty sure he's buying from this place as well. It's, you know, we buy from the same place and you can buy it from the same place too. Uh, maybe we get a bigger discount because we have like coupons and uh, we buy more than $500 worth of stuff and then you get the real extra 5% discount if you email that one dude. But it's available for you guys. Card. There's no reason that Dave and Adams or Miniature Figures or any of these places, uh, sports and more, would give me a better deal than you if you spend the same amount of money. So you can get these boxes. Oh, also True Name Nemesis is pretty good. You can get these boxes and you will be able to get them. And right now it's $85. I don't think that's going to be the cheapest point ever. So at $85 right now, yeah, it's worth buying. Uh, at 80, it would be a very good buy, in my opinion. Anyway, bye guys.